What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Muscle, and this is another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report podcast. And today, we have a special, special, special guest in the building today. We're talking about Francis Champion Sound. We're talking about Ivory Crew. We're talking about T Zion in the building today. What's going on, Big Boss? Yeah, man, with the, yeah, with the vibes, man, oh, you mean? Nice to meet you for the first time. Nice to see you. And I'm very pleased that you invite me in the show, man. All right. Thank you. My pleasure. You know what I mean? Because you guys are actually the ones that's making the big moves. So because you're making the big moves, I decided to say, you know what? Let me invite you guys into what's going on here. Great. Great. Nice to share a vibe. Definitely. Because I remember the first time that me personally, I ever heard Irie Crew play. I think it was Back to Basics in New York. Yeah, that was in seven. Seven, yes, that was the night before World Clash, exactly. The night before the game over, yes, yes, you know? yes. That was you guys, Sound Trooper, Tech Revolution, Nine. yes, Tech Nine with Pretty Rick, he was still around. Revolution, and I think there might have been, but the Tech Nine was a walk in, huh? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Tech night, Tech Nine was a walk in, and we was the surprise guest because we never been on the on the flyer that night. Yeah. Yeah, you know? I remember that night. I don't know what Trooper did. He did something like he touched your dub and it skipped or something like that. Yeah, he tried to pull up a song, you know. <laughs> he tried to pull up a song. And yeah, Smokey, Smokey told him something like, hey, Trooper, don't touch my shit again. Yes, yes. <laughs> you, you remember word for word. That was the first. I said, yo, this guy is serious. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, but that happened. night was very special because it was our, our first time, our first gig in New York. So it was really special for us, you know. And for the first time in our Sonman life, we did miss the plane. So like we was very, very late for the show and we was like totally tired and in a different way with the jet lag. You know how you feel with the jet lag, right? Sure. So the vibe was like different and Smokey was on fire that night yeah <laughs> yeah yeah man so that yeah, was man. the only event that you guys played in new york or you guys had some other events that same weekend there uh no this weekend was the only show we had and the day after we was like at the amazura for the game over yeah. but but as a to witness the show you know yeah, no, that was big there. All right, let's get into Irie Crew's history. How long now has Irie Crew been around, and who was the original members in Irie Crew? The, I am the one that created the song back in 2003, okay. actually. Yeah. And I did it alone, and I call it, I name it Irie Crew in a purpose, in a, for, for a meaning, I mean, for a reason, because I wanted people to join me, because I knew from my experience as a as a son fan, mm -hmm. I realized that you cannot make it alone in a way, you know, like it's a teamwork mm -hmm. and, and, you know, teamwork made, make the dream work. So I want, so I, I name it Irie Crew in a way to bring and to make people join me afterwards, you know? Got you. And this was 2003. 2003, yeah. Who was the first people that actually joined you in from 2000? Back in the days, you know, when you start a thing like this, you always feel like you have to bring your friends into it, you know? So ah. I bring, back in the days, I even bring one of my best friends into it, but he never, he never stayed that long because, mm -hmm. you know, he never got, he got the patience for the music, but mm -hmm. he never get the patience for it and stuff, you know? So then there was like uh, two, three other guys that follow the sound and start to select and start to buy 45 at that time. But they never get the, um, I'm, I don't know, they never get the, um, the word in English is like, they never had the same goal yeah. as mine, you know? So we decided after like six months that, yeah, it's not going to make it. Mm -hmm. And I was really looking for some good people to work with. Mm -hmm. And then came two guys from my city. Yeah. They had another song, but they realized I Crew was voicing dubs and blah, 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 you know, yeah. getting the props and they decided to join me. And we had a good, good two years together mm -hmm. until 2005 or at the end of 2005. Yeah. They decided, they decided to leave mm -hmm. again because of the same reason. And then came Smokey. Yeah. And then came Smokey. And when Smokey arrived, like he used to play for a different sound again, like, oh, uh, he used to play for. Uh, he used to play for Tribulation Song, a song from Luxembourg. 
Yeah. You know, we, which is a small country like up to France, up north. And, and he got a good, good reputation. And he, he, he had some gigs and some clashes that I witnessed. And I was like, wow. Yeah. This guy crazy, man. Yeah. But he was alone. Mm -hmm. And after a while, we realized, like, to be alone, not make it, you know, like, because CDs was coming up, like, you know, like, song with selectors and fast juggling, like, just came up. And we was like, yo, yeah, if you want to express your MC skills or your selector skills, then you have to be a team, at least a duet. For sure. For sure. You know? So, yeah, so some friends stay in the background and they help us like growing up like you know we're doing some communication some graphism and yeah but the the music part the main music part was smoky and me because smoky you decided to join the crew yeah after we had a long discussion yeah and after the reasoning he was like all right according to the dub box we should take iwi crew instead of tribulation Got you, got you. Because you were willing to go to tribulation if that was part of the deal. The, the, that was a question at that time. You see, that was that was a question. But for my re remind him the meaning of I we crew, you know, the the, the crew, the I we crew, the positive vibration behind it, the um, the the way it was going. I mean, like, yeah, we got couple dubs at that time. He got couple dubs too, but. We had a better vision in France, and I mean the people in France get more attention about Iwi Crew than Tribulation. Though, yeah. yeah, so we make the choice, and I think that was a good choice anyway. For sure, because you guys been doing a lot of a lot of stuff. We're gonna get into that right now, but I want to know for you, even personally, when do you fall in love with reggae music, or when do you even discover it to say, "Oh, you know what, I like this." that's crazy man good question <laughs> and that's why i like this type of interview because we can go like you know deep deep in it like uh, yeah i fell in love with french hip-hop when i was 14 or 15 maybe okay and um from the french hip-hop going up and was a huge at that time um i got to i got to listen to some u.s hip-hop as well of course okay and then I was like, okay, you know, and there was some combination with some Jamaican artists at that time coming up, you know, and I was like, yo, what that? And, and I remember I used to listen to some Burning Spear and Steel Pulse without even to realize back in the days, yeah. being, being to some friends and they was playing LPs and blah, blah, blah. I always used to like it, okay. you know, because reggae, it has something special, you know, this, the way it play, I mean, I don't know the, the, the technical word for it, but the way it play, I mean, it brings you into a different vibe, you know? So, and the hip hop combos with the Jamaican artist make me, yo, I was like, yo, let me check this again, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and from you put a foot in it, uh, yeah, man, it's too, it's so huge yeah. as a musical universe that, yeah, I, I get totally catch. And who were some of those artists that you're talking about? Some of the early artists that actually got you involved outside of the Burning Spears? <laughs> Uh, Peter Tosh, Jacob Miller. Yeah. yeah. I named those two artists because guess what? Uh, I still listen to their to them album nowadays the same than 15 years ago because they are the real militant and rebel in Addis. Yeah. And that's what I really used to like. I mean, it, the music part I told you about, like this different way to play music mm -hmm. and this special tempo it have and then the lyrics and the militant style and the message mm -hmm. that that totally catch me back in the days and you know at that time i never was able to speak a word in english brother okay you know so i mean school and i had a, i had 12 years of english in school mm -hmm. i never even get the basics <laughs> you know but thanks to music and thanks to reggae, mm -hmm. beam, I get it. Yeah. It's not, perf it not perfect, you know, I can, you, you hear my accent and stuff, but. But we could communicate and there's not one word yes. in this conversation that I don't understand. And same for me, so all good. And that's thanks to music. Yeah, it was reggae music, wow. And you being from France at that time there, how was the reggae scene back then when you first started to listen to, and where did you actually buy your music when you started to get involved? <laughs> 
Alors, that's, um, France is a big country, right? Like, I mean, we 65 million of people in France, and okay. that's, that's a quite huge country. Yeah. And, but the reggae scene mm -hmm. was big. It was even the second European country to get a huge reggae scene after England. Okay. You know, of course, England, thanks to the Jamaican community, and of course, you know, the, the, yeah, of course. So, you know, and, but then straight after London, you have Paris. And Paris back in the 80s used to get some, the first sound in France playing, you know, and uh, the, we had some big clashes back in the 90s with maybe 2,500 people. That's Paris, you know, yeah. and, and France in general used to be in the reggae. Yeah, we always used to love roots reggae music in France, but also the sound system scene get huge back in the days. And it have, it have some up and down, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, we always got a, a huge scene. Yeah. And, and there, was a, um, there was a DJ and he go by the name, he even have a sound that is legendary in France now. He go by the name of King Dragon. Okay. And and uh, select a Lord Zelko, and he used to have a, a mainstream radio show on Radio Nova that every young people used to listen. So yeah, it, it creates something, you know. Sure. But that was Paris, the capital, and I am more from the countryside. I mean, I am from the northeast part. So there to buy my music. From Paris. Sorry. How far are you from Paris? Uh, three hundred and fifty kilometer. Okay, so you're, yeah, that's a while. That's like a yeah. Back in the days, it was four four hour driving or, or train ride, you know. But nowadays, with the fast train, it, it take an hour and a half, so it make it easier, you know. But back back the, back in the days, to buy my music and my first forty five, it was a whole story, brother. You know, I had to travel to Paris, go to some shops, or I even go to Switzerland to okay. meet some people because, like. And it was the beginning of the internet as well. And um, but it was a little bit after, of course, it was more when I created the song, like early 2000, you know, like uh, I used to go to Switzerland with Asher Selector and he had a shop there in Geneva. And from we start to become big friends. It gave me the opportunity and the chance to stay hours and hours and, <laughs> you know, yeah. and choose my vinyl and blah, blah, blah. He even got a radio station like downstairs. Okay. And so I, I, that was my first radio show there. So, you know, I picked up some tune in the shop and boom, going downstairs, like, yeah, yeah. playing some radio show and stuff. Yeah. No, well, that's big there because that's one thing I always wondered where if you're, because we know reggae is generally coming from Jamaica, but I know Europe is big when it comes even with artists and stuff. But you're figuring back in the days, how would people get this music or even cassettes? How would you even get a cassette to say, okay, I like this sound in the first place? The, 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 the sound system part of it, I mean, because you have the... Europe get catched by reggae thanks to Bob, of course, back in the days, you know, and, and uh, then there was a scene and they get, they get used to Peter Tush LPs, Burning Spear LPs, Steel Pulse, then afterwards and stuff. But this was when those bands were signed on big labels or big companies. But I mean, the sound system scene, a different, a different tree again. It was going on, but underground. Got you. And um, to get the cassette them, like, yeah, it was from, from fans to fans, you know, like it was, there was no shop really, you know, like, so few record shops start to do it like back in the days in France, but they, because they see that there was something going on. But first, I mean, it was some fans that go to the, the US that get the chance to catch a cassette. Yeah. Then they bring it back to Paris or London and send it to Paris. And then but it, it took a whole time to get one, <laughs> you know? And who were some of the earlier sounds that you were listening to back then? You mean uh, internationally speaking? Yeah, right? on cassettes you were getting. Kilimanjaro, Stone Love, and a, a bit after with the Biltmore Days and stuff like King Gaddis, LP. And yeah. You know, like don't beat for the roots reggae fan, of course. Like this is a big reference in France. I mean, like when you speak about don't beat, it's like, yeah, studio one big, you know, like yo. But my part is more yeah, more Jaro LP Addis. Yeah. 
that's yeah. the name to name to name a few you know got you and you said that there was um sound systems in france from time who were some of the foundation sounds from france i would say uh, king dragon as i told you Mm-hmm. Uh, because from he got a big radio show, he also got a song, and he get even the chance to voice Dennis Brown, for example. He's is one of the few, I think, only two or three songs in France got Dennis Brown on the plate, okay. and he is the one, you know. So he was the the first one to bring back the plates on acetate, you know. Like yeah, he was the he was the one to bring the culture. Yeah. Um, but there was couple songs even countryside you know um, but he's the one to remember if you speak about foundation song in france he is the one you know they, yeah, they yes. sound systems and stuff like that. yeah but there was some system even before him but that i was even too young brother <laughs> yeah you know i born i'm born in 78 and yeah i mean like early 80s yeah. was the first dj playing reggae in france you learn something new every day. I, I yeah, yeah, and it it changed nowadays. You know, I mean, like if you compare the scene in Europe, I mean, the German scene may be bigger in terms of sound systems and stuff, but the roots reggae scene is definitely in France. Yeah, that makes sense. And what sound in particular made you decide, say, hey, you know what? I want to build a sound. I like what you're doing. I want to try something like that also. Uh, I used to go to couple clashes. You know, and there was not really a particular one. Yeah. To be honest, we, I, I always told my friends, like, I could do better than them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's, that's, the, that's the way I, I yeah. started it because I was like, yo, but why this guy don't do this? Or how come he mix like this? Or why not this tune at that time? So yeah. after a while, I was also, all right, stop, critis- stop criticize people and do it, you know, like get in the game. You, you want to talk? No problem. Now, yeah. 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 I always, I always had uh, confidence in myself when it comes to, to, to this, you know, I was like, yeah, I could do it. I could yeah. do it. You know? So yeah. Yeah. I did it. Your first sound that you actually played before I recruit. No. And that's the only song I played for only song. Yeah. And I'm glad because that's the one I created, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I never play for no other song. Yeah. They didn't know that, you know what I mean? And how did you even come up with the name Irie Crew? Uh, you know, Irie, it means all right in Jamaica, right? I mean, if you if you have to traduce it, so translate it. Uh, for me, it's I'm like this, you know, I, I, I am a positive person. When I wake up, I'm just feel I just try to keep my problems away and put the positive side like in front of my life. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I, and I am a smoker, brother. So I always feel I and I, yeah. you know, and that's the way I love to meet people as well. You know, like I love when I meet people that the things them I, so yeah, I was like, my crew yeah. must be I, you know, and it never been, yeah, I get criticized because of this, because, you know, we have in France, there is always, there is a I, we song, there is a I, we heights. There is I read this, I read that, you know? Okay. But uh, I don't know why I read crew. A crew, I read, there is only one, you know? So <laughs> they got all in. I, could, I could have found something more original maybe, you know? But I know some song, some song name oh, much more worse than mine, you know? <laughs> and I love mine. I love mine because mine is, mine is positive, you know? Yeah. No, of course. I agree 100%. So then now you guys built the song in 2005 is when you you first built the song, right? Uh, 2003. Three, but when we, when we came up to, together with Smokey, yeah. end of 2005, early 2006. Okay, what were some of your earlier dubs that you had cut on the song for Iron Crew? Mm, the first dubs that I used to cut was some local artists, some French artists. Okay. You know, like, because we have a, we have a good, good scene. We have a good scene with some talents and yeah, so I can name a few, like back in the days, it was like, uh, yeah, Lyrickson, Daddy Mori, uh, Big Red from the band Raga Sonic, fin, big French artist when it comes to reggae, but o- outside of France, yeah. it's now, you know, so yeah. I decided to go deeper in, in the game. And yeah, when I had the chance to meet, for example, Don Carlos in Paris, I, I did voice him back in the days. Yeah. Uh, enough artists like past your friends, you know, so we get the chance. 
and I get contacts with some studios and stuff. So it's always good for me to, to, to call the people and say, hey, you see this artist is in the city. Maybe we could do a little something. Boom, bam, bam. Yeah. You know? And in Paris also, there, there is a couple songs that organize dub session the whole time. So I started it this way. And then, you know, I don't know, man. We, we, we used to go Jamaica and stuff and then build our own links. Yeah. And what was the first time going to Jamaica like for you? Myself, uh, let me think about it. Yeah. Let, uh, let me think about it because that's a good question. Yeah. Um, t- I think it was before, even, we had two years before New York, so it must be 2005 or six or something like this. It must be the same time okay. with, with Smokey the first time. Okay. You know, so yeah, and I don't know why, but we got the chance to, to meet some great people and to be at the right spot at the right time. And yeah, we meet a lot of artists back in the days, like, yeah, crazy, man. But in Jamaica, it's quite easy to meet artists. But it was the, this first trip was, wow. You know, I realized like, yo, we could do this, we could do that, we could do, you know what I mean? So, and we, we were broke at that time, let me tell you. You know, we, we never had that big money at that time. So we were like, yo, man, we need to find a way, you know? The, so, yeah, and step by step. But this first time you go to Jamaica, mm-hmm. like, I mean, it's different, man. I used to travel the world, and Jamaica is different. <laughs> you know, Jamaica, you have a magic there. Mm-hmm. There is a there is kind of a magic. It can go very positive, it can go very negative as well. But there is no in the middle. I mean, like even when you meet someone, it's like there is always something going on. I mean, there is a magic there that I cannot find nowhere else in the world. No, you understand definitely, definitely because I know going to Jamaica, especially when you have a perception of it. And when you actually land there, it's generally two different things. Two different things. <laughs> yeah. Two total different things. Even when it comes to, to, to meet the artist then, you know, like, because you realize that the person is different than the artist, you know? So, but that you realize with the time, you know, like working in the music business. I mean, this is not particular to Jamaica. I mean, in the hip hop scene must be the same, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The perception you have from Jamaica and you and you just land and you, oh, yeah, damn, a totally different thing, man. Yeah. You know, but that's, I really love it, man. And I used to go after the first trip, I used to go every year. Okay. Or nearly, sometime every two years, you know, because of, yeah, schedule and stuff. But the most I, the most I can go, I go. That makes sense. Wow. Okay, let's talk about, let's get into this I recruit here. Give me three of your biggest events that you've actually been in, three of your biggest clashes you've been in. You name one of them mm-hmm. uh, at the beginning of the interview. I mean, this back to basic in New York was like, we get the, um, we boss at that time, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know? So this one is, yeah, the main, for me, it's it, the start of our international career. Yeah. Uh, so this is a, a, a important one, in my opinion. Uh, then, of course, from we came back to New York, from New York, we get a call from Mattia, Warrior Song, Warrior Song. Mm-hmm. to participate to the Reading Clash 2008. Okay. And we was like, oh, yeah. And this, even nowadays, you don't have a clash big like this in Europe now. This was the biggest clash maybe ever. Yeah. Mark my words, mark my words, because this, this, some people will tell you a lie, but I tell you the truth, brother. Yeah. This Reading Clash 2008 mm-hmm. was certainly, if not the, maybe one of the biggest clash in Europe. Yeah. I mean, historically speaking. Who was in that one there? In that one, you got um, Herbalize It from Holland. Yep. You get Soundquake from Germany. Um, Trinity Sound from Sweden, Ecstasy 4x4 from England, uh, of course, Civilize from Belgium, the one that won the clash, mm-hmm. uh, and we, Six Sound, yeah, Six Sound. And Basically more European sounds in Rhythm Clash at time there. Yeah, this year, this 2008 clash, because the one before, for example, if, if my memory good was like Rodigan versus LP or something like this, 
you know, they, they have a franchise like that's a brand. Reading Clash is a brand and that night they call it for the first time war over Europe. And yeah, we marked, we, 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 we catch the people. We never won the clash. Okay. Because there was extra heavy loaded. I mean, civilized. There was prepared like, yo, and we were a young son, brother. You know, like even when I got the offer, I was like, uh oh, I was like, I cannot refuse this. Yeah. But I'm not ready at all. You know? And I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> I got four months to do something. You know, like, and yeah, we, do, we did the work with Smokey and the friends and we did it. And yeah, we, we leave a good impression. So after those two events, yeah. our booking calendar was like whew, getting crazy, man. For the next five years, we did travel the whole Europe. And I won't say the world because, for example, we never touched Japan yet. But I mean, like, yeah, we bring, we, we, we be to a lot of places. And yeah, for the f five years following the Rhythm Clash, we get bookings every weekend. That's crazy, just because of the Rhythm Clash, eh? Yeah, and uh, no, that's wrong, brother. Yeah. Thanks to Rhythm Clash, but thanks to we, because we did the, we did the work, you know? We did it good. They gave you the platform? And you yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly yeah. like what will happen on Sunday, you know? Yeah, we're, we're, we're getting there one second. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the third. Give me the third. Um, the, uh, the third one. The third one. Let me think about it. I will say, not for you to believe or for the people to think that we are sown from the past. I will give you an event that just happened in last December, mm -hmm. and um, it was the Amsterdam Sun Clash, and we won that one. I seen that. Yeah, and uh, we won it like fair square, like clearly, you know. And for me that was the performance where we was on point i mean they they always there was always something going wrong with us in a clash like it could be a, a computer mess up or or i don't know or this or that but this time everything worked the way we did prepare it i mean the plan goes like excellent <laughs> yeah i've seen you guys with that trophy there yeah uh, you guys are in france and you guys tour a lot outside of france what's the biggest difference you find with playing reggae music in france opposed to going abroad and playing it? i mean that's a good question again the language the language and it it changed because young people know in france they speak better english than we back in the back in the days you know but yeah the language barrier you know like because uh for example, on a dance in France, I cannot, I cannot MC in English. I will go everywhere in the world and MC in English. Yeah. But not in France. <laughs> you know? So the French people, they, they love their French accent and their French language. Yeah. I mean, they want to stick on it. And that's it. You know, that's the way they teach the people. Mm -hmm. that's, that's Babylon, brother. Because they teach the people that French can rule the world. Yeah. That, which is wrong. You know, so that's basically wrong. So if you if you make the young people feel like French can rule the world, why 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 should they learn English? <laughs> you know, so but this is changing now because times change. You know, and the young people and now the education system change a bit. But yeah, definitely the language. Well, yeah, that's the biggest difference you find. Yeah. Even like, I guess, the tempo of music, because I'm pretty sure certain places like more hardcore and other places like more dancehall. Yeah, but this is not particular to France. I mean, in Germany, I, I can find some places where they will like more foundation music and a different one than strictly dancehall. Okay. B but um, in France, also a particular thing is like we have a lot of people that love the digital music. The, the the part from 86 to 94 yeah. you know and they will just listen to this part of reggae music <laughs> you know and they get specialized and they get every every little 45 even tune you and me don't know about they got they got them you know we have this hardcore digital fan and we also have a huge robot up scene yeah no then yeah i mean they stick to it a lot yeah. And there is not a lot of songs that play dancehall strictly, mm -hmm. 
you know, even we. Yeah. Yeah, that's particular to France, I mean, mm -hmm. I think. So I guess when you, you, when, if you go on the road, like say when you go to New York or anywhere else, you understand your style of playing, so you adapt to that style very quickly, or you still bring your style and make them listen to your style? Uh, I like your questions. <laughs> uh, that's a very good question, but I even ask myself, mm -hmm. every show I have, I, I ask myself this, yeah. because uh, I love both ways to play, mm -hmm. and I can handle both ways to play. Yeah. But I will prefer myself, will prefer, for example, this quarantine make me do some shows, live stream on Facebook and stuff, you know, and I realize I love to take my time. I love finally to play my dubs, even from top to the end, Yeah, you know, and right. yeah, but that's new. I mean, that's new because, you know, the, 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 the hype is like, yeah, 10 seconds and boom, bam, punchline, punchline, dub, punchline, dub, punchline, next, pun no, yeah, but this... I think I, I start to be tired of it. Yeah. So, and that's maybe what the European can bring now. I mean, something a little bit different. Yeah. And I don't like to copy. I mean, I, I mean, I recruit, for example, I will tell you the truth, brother. I don't listen to a lot of clashes. Okay. I did it back in the days, but I don't do it anymore because I don't want to be influenced. I do my own thing. Yeah. Smokey and me, when we voice dubs, we try to do it our own style. Yeah. Like, it, it, of course, there is some regular dubs, of course, in the Irie Crew box, but we have some particular dubs that it, people know, are we alone? And because we want to create something different. And when it comes to the style of playing, same, same thing, brother. I don't want the people to feel like, oh, I'm the next, I don't know, Tony Mataron or <laughs> whoever, you know. I am t from Irie Crew. Yeah. Love it or hate it. There's only one. Yeah. You only, only one. You brought it up twice. Let's get into it now. We're talking about the big, big, big quarantine clash coming up this Sunday. All right. It's actually the competition is five weeks, but you guys are in this Sunday. Yeah. Who's your competitor? Uh, Cheeky Dubs. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Have you ever played with him before? Never. Okay. What can we expect from you on Sunday in this clash? Expect a lot, brother, because yeah. I will give my full hundred. Yeah. You know, I can even tell the people now we in quarantine, so Smokey won't be able to make it. Yeah. So okay. I will I will be the one to defend my song. And I'm not the usual MC. I mean Smokey is the MC, right? Smokey is the one. And I'm not used to the mic thing. Oh, so I will do it, and but they can expect me to be totally into it yeah. and give my full hundred because we get a chance and an opportunity now yeah. that not a lot of sound will get in their sound man life. Yeah. I mean, major laser platform. Wow. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah, enough respect to Walshi Fire, uh, especially to him and to the whole major, major laser family and also to Matia because they give the sound man a chance to do something big now. Mm -hmm. So when they ask us, I will, I said, yeah, yeah, so let's do it. Even though, you know, Smokey couldn't be there, you could handle this by yourself. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. And you know, I, yeah, let's go, brother. Let's go, man. Let's do it. Let's deal with it. You know? And, uh, we ready, man. We born ready for this. You know, we love clashes and we love that. I love war, man. I have, I have dubs that people won't, won't believe, brother. You know, I'm able to play some dubs. It's not like, you know, I'm really happy to deal with it because guess what? First of all, I will meet a new son man from Panama yeah. and I never know no sound man from Panama personally. So that's, that's a good chance. I mean, after the clash, after we don't kill him, I hope we will have a good juggling in Panama. You know, that's the first thing, you know, and I love this, yeah. you know. Um, second thing is like, yeah, we have a chance to, to, to showcase the song to the world. I mean, and bro, we have dubs nowadays that I want to showcase to the world. You know, so let me let me show the world what Iriku can do, and the world will tell me if it's good or if it's bad. <laughs> you know, 
All right. So you have a game plan going in that you're formulated in your mind right now for Quarantine Clash. I have to say I am very busy at the moment with my next business, right? Which is different. Like we work in the cannabis business with Smokey and and okay, continue. Yeah, yeah and it takes a lot of time actually. Even in quarantine, the people they want to smoke and they want to, to get relaxed. So yeah, we have a lot, a lot of work. So I get really busy with different things. Yeah. But even if I have to get tired as hell. I will always go on a clash ready and prepare. Yeah. So yes, cheeky dubs, I have a plan for you. <laughs> you know? Pop, shot fired right there. We're going to see this Sunday because, again, it's cool that we're talking about this today on, I guess, today is Thursday. Yeah. But then when it comes Sunday, there's only going to be one winner, either you or cheeky dubs. There's no in-between. There's no, oh, we don't know. Alors, I will tell you the truth and about my feelings about it. I didn't I didn't speak about it with nobody, with no one other than Smokey yet. But I will ask you a question, like how it go for the votings? Because like I have the feelings everyone can vote like hundred times on the website now. Um, pretty sure with those guys, they know that. So they probably found a way to... Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, because I, it could be, I, I don't know, it could be the Ivy Crew fan. That do, that do it, you know, that go do, 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 do. But yeah, I, I have the feeling it has to be fair and square for every song. And and because I realize like the last quarantine clash, the supersonic tech nine. Do you know who really won? With the tech nine, that was, which clash was that there again? I'm going blank. Two weeks, two weeks ago, the quarantine clash. That was tech nine and who was in it again? Supersonic. Yes, 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 yes. Can you tell me who won this? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> no one can tell you, brother. Yeah. You know, like, some, they, they both pretend they won. Yeah. So that's the, I love this because you see this, what we're going to do on Sunday for me. It will be not the future of Sound Clash, but it will be a big part of the future of Sound Clash. Sure. You know, uh, of course, we will have some physical Sound Clash again, uh, hopefully, and and as fast as possible. But this E-Clash thing is very important for the future. And yeah, we have to make it professional, you know? So these voting have to be fair and square. That's an important matter. You understand. I got two questions before I get you out of here. You brought it up. Cannabis. When it comes to cannabis in Europe, uh, especially France, is it legal, not legal, from kind of? What, what's the deal with it out there? I, I struggle, brother. <laughs> I like, uh, no, it's, it's not legal at all, actually. I mean, I mean, you have THC, right? The THC part that make you eye of the cannabis. Like, this is illegal in France. Yeah. For now, they, they start to speak about it. They start to, yeah, we should, we should debate or we should speak or blah, blah, blah. They, it starts now. Uh, the CBD part of it, mm -hmm. the CBD is legal. Okay. But they fight the flower of the buds. They fight it. You know, they, 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 they agree with the oil. They, ag they agree with like the wax and those type of stuff. But the flowers, they fight it. But that's the only way to get the oil and everything else. Yeah, yeah. That, no, but that's a total, total a stupidity, brother. You know, like, but you know, they fight it from so many years now that they, 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 they have to find a way to legalize it because economi economically speaking, they don't have the choice now. Even more now with this coronavirus thing. So they have to, they have to deal with it, but they always fight it in a way. So the CBD, yeah, of course, if you want some oil, you need some buds, you know. So, yeah, so, but we are the one, especially we, but some different groups of people, not only we, doing our, doing our things, like we have shops and websites and stuff selling CBD for now because that's the only legal thing and we even sell flowers, but we on the line, you know, but uh, yeah, we deal with it because we want it to be legalized. Mm -hmm. Zin, so and we do it professionally and if we have to go up front we will go up front of, to to fight i mean it's, you know mentally speaking like you know yeah. i see i see is that a spliff or is that a cigarette yeah right. that's a spliff brother 
<laughs> I don't smoke cigarettes. It does me. I don't want no cancer, brother. You know, like, yeah, no, 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 no. We have enough things to fight outside. No, you, uh, no, enough. No, no, strictly weed, brother. I got you. Good. And you bring it up outside now. I know right now I'm in Toronto. We're in quarantine right now. I want to know what's the vibe like in France. And when do you guys think you guys, if you're in quarantine, when you guys are coming out of quarantine? We're in quarantine since a month and a half now. Uh, especially my part of the country because it get it bad. Okay. And we get, uh, I mean, in total in France, we got nearly 25,000 people die. Uh, my part of the country is here in quarantine. They op- hopefully 11, May 11, we should be able to, to go outside. But they say, they say my part maybe will be a red part. And by this, they mean maybe it will go longer. Yeah. So, yeah, and that's the vibe is not that right, actually, because our government did some stupid mistakes. Okay. Like they told the people in the beginning of this, they say, the people used to ask them, like, yo, should we wear some mask? Mm-hmm. And they used to say, mask? No, we don't need no mask. Yeah. We don't need no mask. But finally, we discover a few weeks later that they didn't have any mask at that time. I see. So they lie to the people the first time. Then they lie again according to the test because they say, to test every people in France? No. Yeah. There is no, we have, yeah, we don't need to do that. They even say it will be stupid to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when we all know that it will be great to test everyone now, you know? But they don't, they just don't have it. They don't have the test, brother. And we are in France. I mean, like, yo, come on, man. They never get ready for this, you know? And nowadays, the the, the situation is like crazy, brother. Crazy. I mean, economically speaking, it's like, yo, imagine those bars, those clubs, those restaurants, those, those cinema, those swimming, everything is shut down now. So... There is only one good thing in France, I have to say, because from, from I tell you about the bad, I have to tell you about the good. Mm-hmm. Like uh, the, um, the people that, that are not able to work at the moment, mm-hmm. they get paid by the government. Okay. Like 80% of their salary. Okay, you can live with that. You, see, you know what I mean? And I, I know in the States, I'm in the new United States, a totally different story. You know, so this... This is a good thing with friends, like the social security and yeah, but nowadays the the people don't trust the government anymore and that's 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 not good for the future, brother. Globally right now we're experiencing the exact same thing where at first when the pandemic first started, people were listening to what the government saying doing all of that. But as we got longer and longer, people started to look around like what's really going on they weren't they're no longer just listening to the official statement they're starting to dig deeper into what they think is really going on yeah and we have we have different ways to to dig into it yeah. you know like uh, with the internet and those those uh because those big medias when you look at them and you watch the news and stuff they, you feel like you feel away you know you feel like oh yeah you know half of the, half of the story never been told so uh, let me let me go deep into it and go into different medias on the internet and check stuff. But that's dangerous, brother, because in a way I love this, that the people want to do their, their own research and stuff. Yeah. But you have also bad people that try to influence them. And in a, in a bad, bad way, I mean, like, I'm afraid after this, you know, if you look at history, yeah. if you look at history a minute, and you go back at the Second World War. Look what happened right before the World War. There was an economic crisis, economic crisis, like in 29. Yeah. After this, it, it was the same kind of a shit, you know, like, I mean, it was really a mess. Yeah. And after this, what happened? It was Hitler coming to the power in Germany, okay. you know? And, and it's like years and years we fight the extremists over here. And they get bigger and bigger every year. Yeah. And they are the one to tell the people since 30 years now in France, they tell the people, the, the politics, they lie to you. 
you see and they never get the power so they never they ne of course they they good man they say it's yeah. easy to say yeah they lie they lie yes yeah. they lie so now they get a chance to get the power believe me brother and that's a real bad situation i mean i don't want to see the next election in france yeah i don't want to see that it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be very extremely interesting so even where you are right now are you guys allowed to leave for groceries or stuff or what's that what are they telling you to do out there? yeah i can go outside to do uh to buy some food mm -hmm. i can go outside to do one hour of sport or whatever if i just go walk one hour and maximum one kilometer from my from my spot yeah i can go out to make my my dog take a shit <laughs> I can go, but that's the only thing I can do. You know, in my city, but that's every city in France is different now about this. I have a curfew. I mean, after 10 p.m., I cannot go outside. What? Yeah. So we get a curfew now. Yeah. And uh, it go, it go, yeah, for more than a month now. Mm -hmm. You know, so, but you know, the French president, mm -hmm. a month ago, he said, we on the war. He go on the news, on the big news, and he say he use the the word war, brother. He say, yeah, we, you see French people, yeah. serious thing I want know a war is going on. You know, <laughs> you mean how to put pressure on people? You know, yeah. that's that's uh, you know, I I am the one to tell the people keep your social distance, wash your hands, like be careful, watch out for this because like it's really dangerous, but. It gives the politics a chance now to do whatever they want. You they they had they had a chance muscles to say, all right, let's see how the people will react when we when we put them in quarantine for like in two in two days we're gonna announce this and let's see the reaction. Yeah. They, this is a good experiment for them mm -hmm. to see how people will react to this kind of thing, you know and. Yo, they want to put application on my phone now. They speak about that. They want to put application on our phone mm -hmm. to, 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 to show us if we were in contact with someone who get the COVID. Yeah. You know? So this is, they did it in China, in Korea, and blah, blah, blah. And it seems like it's a good way to keep away from this. Mm -hmm. But, brother, if you give them the chance, you know, you know already who get the chance to go into this, there is already too many people that can check this. Mm -hmm. You know, if you give them this chance, brother, like, no, sir. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know if I get it, but I mean, I, I, I'm, I keep my eyes open. Yeah. That's it, you know, like, because a different thing now. Yeah, totally different. Critical thinker. And that's what I like with you. Listen, T Zion, it's been an amazing, amazing, amazing conversation. <laughs> I can't wait to see you on the battlefield this Sunday inside the quarantine clash. Ready, man. Ready. This is the first interview. Hopefully, when you are the champion, then we'll sit down and give them the <laughs> real history. Because there's a lot of stuff I want to ask you about certain dubs and stuff, but I don't want to expose that hand right now until we pass all of this. So then... I have to win and make sure I will win this. Zin? You got it. Design. It's Muscle. Big. You have my link. Link up anytime. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Muscle, and this has been another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report podcast, and we are out. Pim. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusichut.com. <laughs>